At one point or another, you may have heard that Tim Burton once worked for Disney as an animator, before becoming the producer of The Nightmare Before Christmas, and his illustrious directing career. And it's true, he was an animator. Hi Tim, this is Tim Burton, another one of our people here. But his relationship with Disney delves much deeper than anyone, let alone his fans, could have ever guessed. Isn't he a gas? And that's why you clicked on this Disfair's video, right? So let's not waste any time, let's dive right into it. Moving right along. Like a lot of young artists, Tim Burton dreamed of working for Disney. At the age of 13, he even visited the Disney studio to ask what it was he needed to do to get a job there. To which, he felt, he got a rather bland, uninspiring reply to, uh, you know, go to school. But he needs an education, education, education. Now. Tim hated school, but he nevertheless went on to attend the California Institute of the Arts, also known as Cal Arts. This college was very unlike any other, namely that it played a part, though greatly diminished, in one of Walt Disney's last great visions. Both Walt and his brother Roy were on the founding board of trustees, and Walt had envisioned a college specifically for artists he could then employ in all of his company's artistic endeavors. However, Walt passed away before the overall dream took enough shape to carry on without him. But, in the case of the California Institute of the Arts, that colossal dream spawned a program to teach character animation. In the year 1975, nearly a decade after Walt passed away, but just before Tim Burton was serendipitously entering college in 1976. It was like kismet, or fate, you know, if you believe in that sort of thing. I can't believe it! I just don't believe it! So, it's said that Tim Burton's first animation project was on 1978's Lord of the Rings animation. It was impossible for me to get any precise details, let alone find out what scenes Tim may have worked on. At first, I thought it was implausible he could even have worked on the project. He was obviously going to school at the time. And the only reason I know that is because he made stock of the Celery Monster in 1979 while in college. I've done it! And that was when Disney took notice of him. And it's not like he realistically could have taken a summer job as an in-betweener for Lord of the Rings. But what does make sense was that he worked on the animation while attending college as a sort of hands-on thing. This would also account for why he's uncredited in the production. Not to mention that the animation was rotoscoped and he was an in-betweener. He would have essentially been tracing over actors frame by frame under the eye of a keyframer and that keyframer's assistant. Possibly even the assistant's assistant. Right. I'm sorry, I just, I, you lost me there. So like I said, Tim's final project for college, which in my day was called a demo reel, I don't know what they called it in 1979, was a short entitled Stock of the Celery Monster. Seeing as how Disney Studios was nearby, they often kept a lookout on these final college projects, and they snatched up Tim in short order. He was soon working for Disney Studios on their newest feature, The Fox and the Hound, which was not the most exciting animation. Two of Walt's nine old men retired, and 12 others quit during its production. But Tim was in the thick of it, learning the ropes of animation under Glenn Keane, who's best known as one of the lead animators and designers of Ariel. Glenn also studied under Ollie Johnston, one of Walt's nine old men, and was supervising animator on Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, and Pocahontas. But let's not stray too far from the topic at hand here. Tim Burton was just a terrible animator. At least when he was trying to fall in line with the traditional Disney style of animation. He was supposed to be an animator for Vixie, the female Fox love interest but he couldn't even fake the Disney style. He outright said he couldn't draw those four-legged foxes, and that he believed those foxes looked like roadkill. Why does nothing ever turn out like it should? So Disney put him on distance shots, until the production was over. Then there was Tron. Tim was uncredited for his work on Tron. Information on his work on Tron is incredibly vague but I think it's safe to assume he did some design work that may or may not have been used on the film. I mean, he hadn't done much up to this point, so there's not a lot of information. It wasn't like he and Jeff Bridges were walking off set together for lunch. He was a nobody, working on becoming somebody. 
But something happened during that time because Tom Wilhite, the head of creative development at Disney at the time, thought Tim's unique style might be worth investing in non-Disney type productions. And so, Mr. Wilhite here put together a budget for the animated short, Vincent, which Tim had written and apparently was greenlit to direct. This was Tim's first directing project. It's all about a little boy who wants to be Vincent Price. The story was even narrated by Vincent Price, which is delightful. Disney wanted to change the ending to something more lighthearted and or uplifting. They suggested they wanted young Vincent's father to take him to a ball game and grow to become more quote unquote normal for the outing. Burton refused and the ending still stands true to his vision. You should really check it out. There's even an early version of Jack Skellington for a few seconds. It only had a small release in Los Angeles, going on to receive attention in Seattle, London, winning two awards in Chicago, and the Discriminating Critics Prize at the Annecy Film Festival in France. And Disney liked the stop-motion animation of it too. They really did. Yet, oddly, they had no idea how to move forward with stop-motion and therefore sealed Vincent away into the Disney vault. Then Tim had another directing stint with his interpretation of Hansel and Gretel that I'm not going to go over here because it has nothing to do with animation. Fascinating as it was awful. It's a half hour of candy cane nunchucks, throwing stars, karate kicks into furnaces, and creepy puppets. But back to animation, after the Hansel and Gretel interlude, Tim was put back to the drawing board. Literally. He was placed as an animator for the Black Cauldron. It again did not go well. Again, Tim struggled with Disney's style of animation, and so Tim fell into a depressed state. He visibly displayed a low energy and was found sleeping in a closet. So, seeing as how well Tim did with his concept work on Vincent, Disney managers decided to move Tim onto the concept design of the Black Cauldron and teamed him up with yet another individual who turned out to become a great animator, Andreas Deja. The famed animator of Gaston, Jafar, Scar, Roger Rabbit, Hercules, Lilo. Your knuckles say Cobra. You get the point. He's an animation legend. Tim said the time he spent coming up with ideas and stuff for the Black Cauldron was great. Meanwhile, Deja's job was to wrangle Tim's gothic sketchy stylings to fit a bit more in line with the traditional Disney circular squash and stretch approach. Which wasn't really panning out, but whatever. Tim got to come up with neat designs for characters and furniture and stuff, doing whatever he wanted without being bothered by any oversight. Which does sound really amazing. Until he realized that Disney had zero intention of using any of his work. I couldn't find any clear indication as to why, but The Black Cauldron was a weird production, and it's impossible to point the finger at any one person as to why it failed so spectacularly. There were a lot of things at the time that just weren't gelling over at Disney. In the end, the movie was just not good. In fact, Disney executive Jeffrey Katzenberg is said to have marched down to the editing room himself to rip out the scarier scenes, until Michael Eisner, then CEO, told him that he really needed to take it easy. All right, son. Take it easy now. Nevertheless, roughly 12 minutes was stripped from the film, and it was still considered to be way too dark. Really, I know there are people who love bad movies and whatnot, but the movie was a disaster of an animation, and a waste of very valuable talent. Is this really the best you could do? Then came Frankenweenie, which Tim also directed and has no traditional animation, so we're just going to gloss over it for now. But suffice it to say that it was yet another of Tim's films deemed too scary for children. And given the Black Cauldron debacle, you can understand why Disney executives placed yet another of Tim's short films in the vault. And then finally, and kindly, told him, thank you very much, but you go your way and we'll go ours. By this point, nobody could have said that everyone involved didn't try really hard to make the relationship work. And Tim Burton did go his own way. He went on to make Pee-wee's Big Adventure, Edward Scissorhands, Batman, Beetlejuice. If I listed any more films, you'd get bored. But a miraculous career, spotted with some missteps, sure, but that's the price for taking chances both in business and especially in art. And though Tim didn't go on to do much for traditional 2D cell animation, 
especially at Disney. He has definitely left his mark in stop motion, and he has undeniably influenced the future of all media-driven art. So good job, Tim. Good job. Diz Fair's out. <laughs>